All right, so due to popular demand, um, I'm making a tutorial today for some, I guess you could kind of think of it like inverse kinematics, head motion. So we have Jamo here, and if you haven't seen my previous video for inverse kinematics, um, Unity has built in default inverse kinematics for the right hand and left hand, right foot and left foot. But uh, some people had some questions about what about if you wanted to do some kind of inverse kinematic system with the head? So Unity's inverse kinematics for the head is limited to um, what the head is looking at. So you can do a look at weight and a look at rotate uh, position. Sorry. So you can get your head to rotate that way. Um, but that might not be enough for your use case. Maybe you want the person to be able to crouch in virtual reality, and then your character can also crouch with them. So this is going to require a little bit of diligence on your part in terms of picking out um, what you want your character to look like in each state. But I can show you how you can get this set up really quickly and really fast. So let's get started. First things first, you're going to need a couple of animations. So with inverse kinematics for the hands and feet, you didn't need any animations. And that was kind of the cool part is you could just get it working. And so I'm just going to demonstrate that real fast. Um, I am not using a headset right now. I'm just using some empty game objects to represent the position of my hands in virtual reality. So I've got one hand. I can kind of move it with inverse kinematics. And just so you can see it and, and maybe the scene views perspective. I'm going to try and zoom in. I was too zoomed out. Here's the scene views perspective. So as the, the virtual reality hand moves, you can get the character's hand to move with it. And you can adjust the rotation based on the rotation of your object as well. So we got all that working for the hands, and you can do that for the right hand and the left hand. Um, and right now animations are running, so the animations don't interrupt this, but we can get that all started with inverse kinematics. But what if you wanted to move the head? So that's when things get a little bit tricky because as you can see, I don't have any inverse kinematics code for the head. But what I do have is this line right here. It's a set float line for the animator. If you've used animator components before, then you know you can create these parameters and you can use those parameters to set floats or set bools or do different things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a float and I've got a lerp value here, which basically is picking some value between the highest and lowest and setting it equal to a value between one and zero. So I've got the, the crouching height and um, the standing height. And so I'll share that formula with you in a moment. But let's go ahead and see it in action. So we've got our head target. This would be like your VR headset location. And so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, reduce the height and increase the height. And so it's not quite inverse kinematics. It's really a blend tree in between two different animations. So we've got a crouching animation and a standing animation. I probably could have picked a better crouching animation because this one, it's kind of got a weird rotation with the legs. And stuff like that but I'm gonna show you how to do all that so let's go to mixamo.com and you want to just create a free account um, this is a free website and upload your model for your character and then what you want to look for is idle and there are lots of different idle animations you can pick from um, we don't want an idle with a bunch of motion though we want an idle where very little is happening so this is too much um, we want something that's more kind of like this, but maybe with the hands in a more ideal position. If you know how to make your own animations, then creating your own idle animation is obviously going to be your best bet where your character is standing, um, preferably in T pose. I haven't tested this myself, but I think in T pose, that would be like the perfect idle animation. And then you also want to have a crouching idle animation. So for your crouching idle animation, you want to have, I don't know, maybe something like this. Uh, actually, that's too low. That, that looks really weird. Yeah, that looks really weird. Um, we want them to be more like what your crouching position would look like. This one might work. I don't know how to rotate in uh, in Mixamo. Let me click on that guy. Oh, there we go. Left click and hold. 
So this one, uh, I guess that's not what we want. Um, we want a kind of like a straightforward crouch. I wonder if we can find one of those. Otherwise, you know, obviously making your own idle animation would work. Um, all these are like offset by a little bit. None of them are that straightforward crouch that I'm looking for. Yeah, see how he's always looking to the side? I don't know why they do that, but um, this one might be cool. Be a little bit weird, but anyway, you find some animation, and I'm going to go through the motions of downloading it. So I'll use this one. Um, we're going to download it. You can change it to 60 frames per second if you'd like. And it'll just take a moment to download, and then go to show in folder. And you're going to take that file and... Um, if you have to, you can rename it, but I'm going to go ahead and drag it into Unity. So now I have, this is the one that we just found. And what you want to do is go to Rig and change it to Humanoid. You may need to adjust a couple of things. Um, so I'm going to click Apply. And if you need to configure anything like where the head is located or the hands or the feet or anything like that, you can do that in the Configure menu. Um, but what I want to do now is go to the Animation menu and change the name of this to, um, let's call this full crouch idle. And then just click apply. And now what I can do on my animator component is I can make a blend tree and assign particular animations to that blend tree. So I'm gonna make this the full crouch idle uh, if I can find it. I think I missed, oh, here it is. So there's our full crouch idle. I wonder if I, yeah, okay, so it'll maintain uh, with or without play mode. And I'm going to show you how to do the blend tree in a second. I just want to test this to see if it looks any better with that particular idle animation. So I'm going to go to my head target and then bring it down. So uh, it's a little bit different, but I think I like, I, I kind of do like this one a little bit better. Anyway, but you could find um, animations that work for you, for your use case. And then, of course, if you want motion, then you're going to probably do some more um, blending with whether or not the character is moving. So how do we set this all up? It's pretty simple. You're going to go to your animator component on your character. And right now it's showing you the blend tree, but we're actually going to look at the base layer. This is what you'll see. So from the base layer, you can right click and then create state. And you want to create from a new blend tree. Now, when you click on this blend tree, um, the default settings are usually fine. What we want to do is double click, and then it opens up the blend tree view. So now I can left click on this blend tree and I get a new inspector menu. So we're going to do a one dimensional blend. Feel free to do two dimensional blends if you have like running around and things like that. But for crouching, it should be pretty one dimensional. It's based on the height of your tracked object. So we're going to add uh, two parameters here. So you can add a motion field and a motion field. And then you'll get something like this. You want to make sure that it goes from 0 to 1. If you kind of like move your mouse, you can adjust that value. But we don't want that value to be adjusted. We want it to go from 0 to 1. If you mess it up, you can go to the threshold and change it back to 1. We're going to select our animation. So I'm going to pick an idle animation. Now, uh, if I can find one, idle for Mixamo, and then uh, crouching idle. Actually, I wanted the full crouch idle. And so now that I've chosen my two animations here, the next thing I need to do on this blend tree is select um, my parameter. So my parameter needs to be, um, I created a parameter and I called it Jamo head. So I'm going to go ahead and, and select Jamo head. If I go outside of play mode, I can show you what that looks like. So you press the plus, you press float, and then tracked VR head, or whatever you want to call it. It really doesn't matter. So you just assign that here, and that's it. You're pretty much done at this point. So everything should be working. Um, now you need to go into your code and just write a line of code here. So we already have, if, again, if you haven't seen the previous video about inverse kinematics, I basically have an animator component. Um, I have assigned that using get component. And then I'm just setting a couple of values here. So for the head in particular, what I'm doing is animator.setfloat. 
and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it on screen. Um, so I put the name of the parameter that I'm tracking, and then I want to use mathf.lerp, and I'm going between 0 and 1 because those are the values that will work for a blend tree that's one dimensional. And then for my lerp position, um, I want it to be, um, I'm just normalizing the, the distance between my lowest position and my highest position. So this would work obviously in a flat game. Um, if you wanted to do a game where you have hills and things like that, and uh, you still want to be able to do this calculation, basically what you need is your position dot y, um, where zero is the ground height, and, and this is the position away from the ground. And then you need your crouching height away from the ground, and you need your standing height away from the ground. So I've created a couple of floats, crouching height and standing height. And so currently in Unity, I assign those to 0.78 and 1.2. I picked those numbers because in the scene view, um, I was just basically measuring uh, where would my head target have to be based on the location of Jamo's head um, during his animations. So I basically like kind of played around with it and, and picked the numbers that worked for the crouching height and the standing height. And so as you can see, his head follows it pretty well. And we get that sort of inverse kinematics effect. So hopefully this video is helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop those in the comments. If you thought this was um, something that you'd want to see again in the future, like a video like this, go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again in the next video.